Hey guys, welcome back to another military video, and today we're going to be reviewing a U.S. Army trench coat. Now, before I get into this video, I would just like to address some things. Well, I'll have that be two things. One, yes, you might notice something different about me. I decided to grow out a mustache. i have It's this little thing I've had since October of last year, where at the beginning of October, I grow out a mustache, and then into the next year, I would have to, maybe I shave it, but... uh this time, you know, it's just like the usual, and at the beginning of October, I decided to grow a mustache, and it's been going, growing pretty good, and I might keep this or shave it, but I might shave it around, if I do decide to shave this mustache, I might shave it around maybe, I would say May or April 2024 at the latest, I'd, maybe, I don't know, or maybe I'll keep it by then. Another thing... I also wanted to address was the lack of military videos. So the last time I did a military video, I believe it was in August when I reviewed my German Flecktarn channel. It is now October and I am so, so goddamn sorry that I've been late on the military videos. And that's because I've just been going through some, you know, personal issues. I'm not going to get into them since, you know, it's bit you know it's not really touchy but i just don't feel like discussing it on this channel but also i uh you know just with my job it's you know kind of hard to with scheduling even though i only work you know certain days out of the week it's you know i'm sorry but it's just again i i just wanted to take a break that's all and i felt like i should have announced it and sadly i did not so i'm sorry about that and yeah, I am. That's why you really haven't been seeing a lot of military military videos from me. So, with that little, I'm sorry for that little side tangent. I just had to get some things out of the way. But with that little tangent out of the way, let's talk about a little bit of the history of this jacket. So the history on this jacket is a bit limited, and I'm sorry to inform of that, because I really couldn't find much information about the specific jacket. However, what I could find from the little sales tag from it, as well as the clerk at the military surp at the military surplus store that I bought this from, this jacket was made by well the U.S. Army sometime in the 1940s, not like in the late 1940s as you know World War II was beginning to end, but sometime in early 1940s. So right around the time where the U.S. was declared their neutrality in World War II, but also at the same time when they began, when they started to enter the war after the attack on Pearl Harbor. And I gotta say, I tried out this jacket a few times when I got home from the military, from the military surplus store, and I gotta say, for a jacket that is almost a hundred years old, it's pretty damn comfortable. And I'll show some photos of, of what a similar jacket looks like. It is a bit of a different color, and since it's, um, since in these photos it's going to be more green, while this one is kind of tan-ish, so I'm sorry about that, but, um, here's some similar photos of the jacket, and I hope you like them. So with the history out of the way, let's try on the jacket. And here's what the jacket looks like, people. And right now it feels it feels very snuggly on me. And it feels, you know, as I've said before, even though this jacket was made sometime in the early 1940s, but if I could guess maybe 1941 to maybe 1942, it feels very comfortable. And the inside right now, there's, um, there's a bit of a zipper on the back, which you could, you know, unzip and have it not as, like, snuggly on you if it's, like, in slightly, you know, not as cool weather, like, say, in the spring. It feels, it kind of feels like a bomber jacket, like, you know, like, the type you could get at, like, a surplus store from Levi's. That's what it feels like on the back, and for the sleeves, it also feels very, it feels very smooth and almost silky to an extent, if that makes any sense. And, you know, right up here, there's um some buttons right here, so that's how I can make sure this jacket stays, you know, tight, and some little 
things right here, which are pretty good. Also these little uh, shoulder things. So say if you had, say if you're gonna attach like a Sam Brown belt to this, this would be really good and, and to make sure that the belt stays, you know, tight on you. But I also wanted to discuss some other features about this jacket that I personally like. Another thing that I like about this jacket, like many other old military jackets, is buttons. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, in order to close this jacket, you have to have a bun. You have to, you have to, you know, you know attach these buttons. Well, not attach, but you know, use these buttons to make sure that the jacket is closed. And I like that. I have a uh, Norwegian military jacket that is exactly like that. If you haven't seen that video, I definitely recommend checking. I excuse me. I definitely recommend checking it out. And what I also like about this jacket is the side buttons. Now, you might be asking, what are these for? Well. In my opinion, this is just a little theory of mine, though, to any, like, experts that are more experienced in military, you could correct me down in the comments, but I believe the side buttons right here on the side could also be used as extra buttons. Say, if these buttons right here were to come off and, you know, they got loose and you can't find them, these guys right here would definitely 100% come in handy. So, yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's a pretty comfortable jacket. It's very, as I've said before, it feels... I know I keep saying this over and over and over and over again, but it feels very comfortable on me. Another thing that I like about this is this little belt thing right here. So if you wanted to make sure that your jacket stayed on further, you could just, you know, tighten it and then go over the little belt loop here. Do this little belt loop doohickey thing. Tighten it. And then if you want to make sure that this little doohickey isn't flapping about, you simply put in this little socket over here and your jacket is now tight. Another thing that I do like about it is the pockets. Not only are they big, but also you can't see them, but there's um, some buttons on the inside, which I'm guessing are going to act as, you know, maybe could, I guess, I think they're for, I guess the buttons on the side of the pockets are for these guys, just in case these get loose, so that way you have some more extra buttons. I mean, the amount of buttons on this jacket is a bit crazy, but you know what? I don't blame them. You know, you're going to need, if you're going to, if you are, Use it. If you have this jacket and one of them, you have a button that comes off, you don't have to worry about going to like Walmart or Target or Michaels or Kohl's or whatnot and buying, an, and buying some extra buttons. You already have some extra buttons on your jacket. And remember when I said that I also, another thing that I liked about the, um, another thing that I like about the pockets is how big they are. And it's just, you know, you can fit a bunch of stuff into this. So let's take my phone, obviously, like most phones. It fits in perfectly. Let's try this little thing of chapstick. What do you know? Fits right there. Let's try these, uh, my pair of sunglasses right here. Definitely, okay, fits perfectly. And what about these little pair of earbuds? Uh, what do you know? Fits perfectly. And I gotta say, it's, as I said before, this, it, <laughs> It's, it's kind of crazy on how big the po the pockets are. Though, then again, this is a U.S. military jacket, so I'm pretty sure that the reason why the pockets are big are for, say, someone's handgun, say, like a Colt 1911 or a Browning High Point, since those guns were being used by the U.S. Army during World War II. But also magazines, say, for, like, an M1 carbine or an M1 Garand. I could definitely see a U.S. soldier wearing this and putting it in there, say, especially around, say, like, the Battle of the Bulge or in the Ardennes Offensive, right around there. I could definitely see that happening. And honestly, I don't blame them for wearing this during World War II since it feels, as I said before, it's, it feels pretty damn comfortable. It is, would I recommend buying this? Absolutely. If you can find your size in this jacket, you... It might be a little difficult to find online, so I would recommend going to your local military surplus store. Now, if I could recommend what would be the best time to wear a jacket like this, I would say definitely now if you live in a colder state when, you know, when it's already fall, but also say around the winter because honestly, in my opinion, I could see, you know, I could see myself wearing this on multiple occasions, especially up here in New York because our winters here are really <laughs> really crazy if you if you've never lived up north especially near the canadian border near winter oh my god it is it's freezing cold but it's you know i'd also could see myself wearing this but i also would recommend this around the springtime and by that i don't mean when when it's like very warm out and that type of spring i mean when the snow is starting to melt but it's still like in the 40s 50s and maybe the 60s i'm not sure how well this would work and 
the uh, <laughs> in the summer or the late spring because pretty sure you would be sweating a lot in this. But if you were wearing this jacket because you're, you know, around that time because you're reenacting, say, for an American or British or Canadian soldier, I could see this jacket coming in hand. And it, exactly, I could see that possibility happening. Though, I will say, though, as I said before, at the as I said before, I primarily would recommend wearing this jacket in the fall, winter, and early spring. But um, with that out of the way, let's talk about my final thoughts on this jacket. So, what are my final opinions on this jacket? I definitely would give this jacket a definitely a hundred. I would, in my opinion, I think this is a pretty good jacket to buy. I wouldn't give it a rating system, but I would say it is pretty good. I don't really have any complaints about this jacket other than I wonder what these are for I want to I, I think it's I'm, I'm not really sure what these are for to be honest though if you are to any like military experts who know what these little do hickey strap things are for please let me know down in the comment section below and you might be wondering Dawson why is this video so short usually your military videos are a bit longer than this well I can explain that tomorrow is going to be Halloween and it's going to be the it's going to be a Halloween special because I have a certain camo pattern that I've been wanting to review ever since I got it back in July or August if I remember if I remember correctly. And you might be asking, Dawson, what camo pattern are you referring to? Oh my friend, I am referring to Portuguese lizard. It's a pretty good camo pattern. I will not discuss further of it because that will be a video I will be releasing tomorrow. And, and that concludes this video, my friends. So if you like this video, make sure you click the like button down below and subscribe for more content like this. And don't forget to follow me on all my social media accounts on Minds, Odyssey, and Instagram. And also, if you feel like it, make a donation to me via PayPal or Cash App. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.